most comfortable hanging around people your age, you might want to try spending time with people of a different generation. Dr. Lori Stevick Russ is here to tell us why it's important to build intergenerational, intergenerational relationships. She's a psychologist and the author of Put On Your Big Girl Shoes, Stepping Into Courage, Resilience, and Gratitude. I think this is such an important, I visit a lot of nursing homes and I see how they react when young people visit these nursing homes. It changes the lives of both the visitor and the visitee. Absolutely, and that's the that's absolutely the critical element of this. So I think you know we think about diversity, and whether you're working in a business environment, a healthcare environment, or just even in your own lives in your community, we often think about diversity in different ways. But typically, we don't think about it as an age issue. No, that generational relationships is about adding more diversity to our lives. And so, as you know, I had the the great privilege of having my grandmother live to the age of 105. 105. Yeah. Yeah, with so a very remarkable. healthy intact brain and her message um, just before she passed away a little over a year ago was really about making sure that people who didn't have grandparents or have access to this kind of relationship that we made made every effort in her name to make sure that we are funding and supporting and creating intergenerational programs. And you've actually started a foundation. We did, we did. It's called Nana's Tribe Foundation. Um, and it, it's the whole mission and purpose is to do just that, bring generations together, but not not really just for like a one and done, like, okay, you go to a baseball game and you enjoy each other. It's about building relationships. Because right. one of the things that we know is that social isolation and depression are the two big issues that seniors face, but just coincidentally, it's also the two big issues that college freshmen struggle with. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And so when we, what, one of our projects is to bring those two groups together and say, you're both struggling with the same thing. Yeah. What if we put you in a classroom in a college setting and you were taking classes together, which forced you to work on projects, group interactions and developing a relationship right. that both parties to your point benefit, not just the seniors. This isn't like we're just doing something kind hearted for the seniors that our college age kids will benefit as well. And that's just one of the programs that we're looking at. Do you think our social age, the you know, being on our phones, these for young people especially, is, is leading to social isolation? I think, I, I definitely think it is. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Because again, it's your, um, your internal. And we know that we are social creatures of habit. There's a reason that isolation in prison or, you know, when we give somebody solitary confinement, it's a punishment. We are creatures that require contact, physical contact, physical contact, emotional connections with other people. And you know that that changes as people get older and they lose family and they start to lose those connections. But also I think for, for kids, and I say kids like can be little ones, can be college age children, can be people in their 30s and their 40s that don't have the benefit of what a generation above or two generations above can grant them. It's just the whole different perspective taking that we all benefit from. And I know that I certainly did as a grown woman with a grandmother, um, you know, for that many years. Yeah, and, and you know, th for people who don't have grandparents, I was lucky enough to grow up with my, with my grandmothers, not my grandfather so much. And I kind of developed that relationship and mm -hmm. saw the importance of being with them. But there are many places that you can go out there mm -hmm. to connect with older people Absolutely. and older people to get involved with younger people as well. Yeah, I mean, think about what our, you said you go into the nursing homes. What do most of our seniors say? I don't want to go to a senior center. I don't want to be around old people. That's, that's what my mother says. Yeah, they don't want to be around old people. And why? Because they want the energy that the youth brings to them. Right. And the youth, when they think about, I want wisdom. Like right now, um, you know, maybe this situation in my life feels so overwhelming and I'm so stressed and I'm so depressed but somebody who's lived a life that can look in the rearview mirror and say, honey, listen, let me tell you right. what it feels like today and here's what happens and here's where you go. It's bringing about the value and the richness that can that can happen in those relationships. I just think it's amazing. You look at some of these people and what they have been through. Oh, and you're yeah. like, oh my yeah. God, if they can do this, then oh, yeah. I can certainly do this. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's like, it's history that comes alive for our college kids or our high school kids. You know, you're not reading about things in a book. You know, if you're dealing with somebody who lived through World War II or who had other experiences, you now have a face. And then that adds to your 
empathy. It helps us reduce bias and prejudice because now you have a different visual. You have an actual relationship. And that's ultimately our goal and our vision with this organization. Which is just terrific. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, again, young people, old people, doesn't make a difference. Don't no. even look at age. Right. We're all people. Exactly. Exactly. And usually when we think about intergenerational programs, it's usually people going, oh, I know about that. It's the, the children singing songs to the nursing home no, residents. No, right, no. And it can be, and it I don't want to minimize right. that, but we're talking about truly developing relationships right. like you would with your family and creating those families, because it takes a tribe to get through this life. It really does. I mean, it really does. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, we're, part, it does. we're glad that you're a part of our tribe. Well, I'm so happy to be part of yours as well. Thank All right, you. again, Dr. Lori is the author of Put On Your Big Girl Shoes, Stepping Into Courage, Resilience, and Gratitude. To learn more about her and the Nana's Tribe Foundation, visit drlori.net. Thanks everyone. Hopefully the video played all right on everyone's end. Feel free to turn on your cameras again and unmute yourselves um, when the discussion comes about. I'll let Rebecca take it away. Hi. So uh, this video seemed to go, go well without any glitches. So I'll start out with the first question. So why is it important that intergenerational programs have mutual benefits for both youth and the seniors? So in the video, they did talk about that it's not just you're doing something nice for the seniors. So why do you think it's beneficial for it to be mutually beneficial for each side? Why would that be a good way to promote things? I'm gonna try to change my screen so I can see more people. Oh, maybe I can't. Hmm. Anybody want to talk? Feel free to show it out. Or you can write in the chat too. Well, I'll jump in to kick us off. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I liked about what she spoke about, because I think that there's a certain stigma that goes along with social isolation. So if it's viewed more broadly across more age groups, I think it takes away a little bit of that tinge for older adults of feeling devalued or stigmatized if they're lonely. And conversely, for young people as well too. So that's, um, I think, one of the good takeaways I took from her, her talk. So to really value each other and what they have to offer. I'm seeing in the chat, so another comment about both generations having so much to offer. She did talk in the video about um, energy from the youth and the knowledge and perspective from the seniors. Um, empathy and understanding on both sides, new connections and learning new ideas from different perspectives. Yeah, those are all really great points. Uh, do anybody else wanna comment before we move to the next question? I think one of the things I really liked was um, that each each generation needs to feel like they're doing something to help. Um, you know, neither one likes to be the the helped person, but each, the, when they're mutually beneficial, everybody's in it to support one another. So very true. Yeah, that's a good point. I think. Mm hmm. They're there, you're there for each other, like uh, they were saying, you need a tribe, everybody has a purpose and everybody has something to bring to the table and offer each other. Okay, um, many older people don't want to seem as needing help. What would a program that is mutually beneficial look like? So what kind of activities or relationship building focus points, how would you make that look so it's not just that you're helping them in some way or even pointing out the, the struggles that they may be having as they age? Any hands up? Everybody is video muted except a few. <laughs> I think um, 
uh, sorry, I'll keep my video muted. I just don't have good internet connection no, today. Um, but I, I think one of the, the key things is just that um, opportunity to share. Um, and for seniors not wanting to help, they also want to be seen as being useful and being purposeful. So I think the components and programs, you know, we've seen some programs where there have been like um, seniors uh, perhaps helping students, uh, English as a second language learner students, um, sharing and talking. And so again, that mutually beneficial where it's, um, you know, they enjoy sharing some wisdom and they enjoy being able to help somebody learn to read or learn, um, you know, language skills. And that can be, again, using their skills and talents. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking, too, that it really helps if you know both your seniors and what their strengths are so that you can use their strengths within the program that you're doing so it really helps to know your community that you're working with. If you're working with, you know, really active seniors, you can do different things. And if you're working with more seniors who may be struggling with um, memory issues or things like that. And so I think you have to know, so you don't place them in a position, the seniors or the students, where they feel like they can't participate in the program. Anyway, that's just a thought that occurred to me. Mm -hmm. We have, have to, oh, go ahead, sorry. We have a program that we, we would like to implement uh, from our um, Two Hills office. We have quite a few seniors who are still uh, living in their own home, but they are struggling to stay in their own homes and especially with things like snow removal, yard work, things like that. So um, we were trying to figure out a program that would be easy uh, and get on our, we have two large high school populations here right in town and get the kids involved in kind of a citizenship promotion and getting to know their neighbors and the seniors. So we came up with an idea of how you used to have a block parent sign. So if you needed help with snow shoveling, you could have the same kind of, we would provide the sign. You'd put it in your window and then the, the kids could get together and decide what areas of town they could work with. So they could provide that help and get to know those people in a safe way, especially with COVID where we don't want a whole bunch of interaction. Mm -hmm. It would just, we, we felt that might be a way to start to get the kids involved with the and to know how many um, senior people live in their community. So we, uh, that's on the back burner as everything seems to be, but that is one of the initiatives we would like to start and then perhaps carry that whole concept um, into then uh, the spring and summer. Oh, that sounds amazing. Really helps with the, with the signage. So they, it's easy to, to do and see and interact. And there doesn't have to be a lot of, um, let's say, the bureaucratic side of things overseeing it all. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. There's a comment in the chat from Deanna saying they run a soup, soup making volunteer group. The soups are made and shared with seniors who are isolated, as well as the youth center lunches for kids needing food. We have people from their 20s to 70s making soup together. Uh, they work together in an approved commercial kitchen so that they can use the food for the programs. So that's really neat. They're sharing the yeah. knowledge in that, in that way and, and getting to interact. I'm just <clears throat> going to jump in. I'm going to tell you about the picture that you're looking at. I took that in one of my programs pre-COVID naturally. And because we're talking about older people don't want to be seen as needing help. This woman, her name is Yvonne. She's been in the program for years. And these are high school students. The one, the one in the black top, she is legally blind. And the other one is an international student from Japan. And so her English was limited. And so because we, this is at a care center and Yvonne being the person that she is, she was able to just embrace and engage those students. And this was a mutual reciprocal um, relationship. And one morning, the care center liaison that I work with, she phoned her office and she said, I just have to tell you that Yvonne, Yvonne came to my office this morning and said, I now have a purpose in my life. I have a reason to get up in the morning. So imagine those girls think they are there 
And they are doing something for Yvonne. <clears throat> but Yvonne thinks she's there doing something for the girls. And through all this, you can tell how engaged they are and their relationships that they're building. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Definitely highlights the mutually beneficial part. Oh, whoa, ah, okay. <laughs> that's a little too fast. Right. Click. <laughs> Okay, so our next discussion question here. What is the importance of a relationship versus having a class come in and sing and perform? So there's, it's still great to have that entertainment piece, but what would be more beneficial about the relationship side? Oh yeah, Kate, so we have deeper connection. Oh, definitely for sure. Interaction, validation, sharing, connecting. I think something she said in the video too was a, developing those long-term relationships mm -hmm. is what some of the goal is, right? Yeah, so it's an ongoing reaction. Teaching, learning, and valuing each other. Yeah. I think another one would be um, decreasing isolation, increasing connection, and decreasing depression. Most definitely. Especially in these times, it's 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 so hard for a lot of our seniors to to connect safely with others because they're not allowed in the building or they're not allowed out. And uh, so when they can actually build a relationship, it's it's a deeper conversation than just watching the other side. It's because it could be kind of viewed as watching TV, so to speak. You're not really connecting with with the performance. Oh, we have uh, sharing stories building connections and relationships in the community, creating a village around everyone. Mm -hmm. Ties yeah, back into I think the a village. It oh, kind of builds on what everybody else is saying, but I think when there's more opportunity to interact, there's more opportunity to humanize each mm -hmm. other. So I think that there's a greater probability that you're going to impact ageism, like in both directions, right? So, um, yeah, I don't know if I'm articulating that very well, but that's my my attempt at it. <laughs> yeah, it's like in the video when she said it helps to decrease the bias because you can you now have a relationship with someone that at re is in those different mindsets. Yeah, less othered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. And then in relationships, they become friends. Mm hmm. And we have a relationship allows for greater understanding among participants rather than just interacting from afar, especially if the goal of the program is to reduce socialization and ageist attitudes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you for articulating what I was trying to. <laughs> so that was that was Amber. <laughs> Whoever. <Well, Amber. laughs> okay, and our last discussion point, we've already been doing a lot of uh, sharing of programs and ideas, but we can continue with that. So examples of programs that focus on relationship building. Anybody else have stories that it can be stuff you've been doing that works or stuff that you hope to do, or it's just kind of, let's just brainstorm and share ideas here. I'll start. <laughs> um, our, our Rural Lake program is last year had to go virtual with COVID and last year it, it consisted of a lot of letter writing and the kids going and doing stuff outside of the win out outside of the windows at the care home so the seniors could see them, they just were safe. Uh, whereas this year, it's a new group of kids and they have so many new ideas and they are way more tech savvy than me. So they've been doing little Flipgrid videos and interactive videos and they know how to make them really, really small memories. We can actually email them to the seniors so then they can watch them and it's a huge difference in interaction with them. And we were able to get the senior center set up with a big, big, huge screen. So they project when we have the kids on video onto the huge screen so they can all see each other and interact that way as well in amongst sending videos to each other because the kids will say and interact way more in a video than they do in, in a letter. <laughs> and we give them a lot of different opportunities to like this is the topic and they decide how they want to share and interact because some of them are very creative and like to draw and make big collages and pictures. And the seniors do a lot of like, they bring in stuff that the kids might not recognize and do show and tell with it. And then they get on discussions on how things have changed and different life experiences. Oh, we've got a bunch in the chat here. 
uh, groups of kindergarten grade two students connected with older adults in residential care. Oh, that'd be so cute. And we would have a theme for the visit and offer students some suggestions of questions to ask their grand buddies based on the theme. We also have games, puzzles, coloring available. Sometimes conversations flow better when you have something to work on together. That's very true. It's kind of awkward when you're staring at each other. And we would like to bring young adults to join in the gardeners. We would also like to bring together all ages to listen and record stories on overcoming adversity, etc. A natural and cultural way of interacting with all of the family. Yes. And storytelling, too, used to be a great way where, like, the grandparents or elders would tell the stories. And there was always that, that teaching lesson tied into it that brought you to your culture and your stories and learnings while you got to listen to the story. Anyone else? One of our local senior centers here um, actually ran their own program where they did a bit of a matching of, of skills um, with the seniors and a desire to learn. So they had some kids coming in and some were reading um, and it helped improve some of their reading scores. Some were um, teaching some woodworking and some different carving to the kids. Um, there are some doing some painting. There are some doing some baking and it turned into helping um, do some baking and some fundraisers for the senior center. So it was really neat kind of once they got going and they found different skill sets within the seniors and kind of match them to the kids. Of course, that was pre-COVID and it's not happening now. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we get back to being able to interact and show each other those skill sets. Yeah. Uh, just want to draw everybody's attention to the chat. There's an FYI about activity ideas in the discussion thread and there's a link. And then we're going to go into breakout rooms. Uh, so the question is in the chat and it's also on the main shared screen right now. So the questions for the breakouts, which we'll be heading to shortly, would be how can we be a support for one another in this community of practice? And how might we stay connected with each other in our own communities as we all age well? Oh, we have another group person said one community did an intergenerational community music night. People brought instruments or performed using their talents. Cool. Awesome, thank you. So I will put everyone into breakout rooms. You will receive like a little prompt and then feel free to click that and then be teleported basically. So I'm opening the rooms now. And we'll see you at around 11.50. <laughs> Twenty more seconds before the all the rooms close automatically. So even if you don't want to leave, it will close on you. Oh, and I forgot to tell our team to stay on later. Okay, well I think they're used to that by now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> protocol. All right, I think. Everyone is trickling back in. I see our numbers increasing again. Yeah, so we have everyone. Okay, so welcome back. How did it go? Okay, don't all speak at once. What I want to hear and what I think the rest of us want to hear is, did you hear anything in your group that would be interesting for the rest of us to hear about? So somebody from each group just jump in and tell us what was the what was something you gleaned or even if you knew about it before it was just like sometimes we just need reminders of things. I think one of the points that came up in ours that a lot of us never thought of was the intergenerational intergenerational effect on bringing different ages together and how that and how when we look at elder abuse, that can actually decrease those situations because then people recognize 
maybe their elders as an actual person instead of just some old person, right? So um, that was a really profound um, little conversation that we had. So I appreciate, uh, I can't remember the lady's name, but I really appreciate you sharing that um, as beyond profound. And I know that there's a stigma against young people as well as there is a stigma, of course, against the aging population. So uh, breaking down those barriers through the intergenerational and decreasing elder abuse, beautiful, yeah. Yeah, that's something I never thought about, but of course, it makes sense once you think about it. Okay, anybody else? Our group talked about um, sort of some of the online programming that is available and also things like Seniors Connect or Community Connections where people might be identified or asked to be identified by requesting a check-in when they get their um, food hamper or food drop off or meal delivered or something like that. Um, they're given the opportunity to leave their name and have someone contact them. Wow. And I'm thinking for something like that too, if you were involved in an organization like that or something to that effect, um, we had a phone pal program at Linkages back during COVID. Um, we've kind of off boarded them now, but they would have a weekly phone call with usually, I think the students were over 18. So mostly university students would have a weekly hour long, well, an hour, 30 minutes with a senior. And that was kind of the same thing. It's kind of like a check-in, but they developed a definite relationship. Okay, anything else? Uh, we also talked about the different ways that would be helpful for everybody to stay connected. And they did say that multiple ways, like these kind of meetings where we're all sharing ideas is great. Having an email or phone list would be ideal as well, because then if you just got to check in with someone that maybe has a community of a similar size, so you can bounce ideas of what worked, what didn't, how did you overcome certain barriers, as well as having success stories and tips and tricks type of thing posted online somewhere that you can access too. So those were the three main ways of staying connected that were said to be potentially beneficial. Okay, that's a good segue to core. If you haven't joined CORE yet, go to the website of corealberta.ca and become a member and then join our group. There's tons of groups there. You may be interested in others, but we're all about intergenerational programming. And then we have discussion threads, we have resources, we, um, you can connect with the other members that way too. And I'm thinking I would like to devote more time to start discussion threads on there and get more people involved. But I've noticed over time, I recognize people coming to our events. So, you know, you're not all here for the first time. Some of you have been to all our events. And so it's happening. Our community is developing and I think that's exciting. Okay, what are you taking away? Oh, what are you taking away from being at this event today? So you can either put it in chat or why don't you share with the group? What is it that was valuable for you by attending today? I always have something to say, you guys probably noticed. <laughs> That's good. We need people to have some <laughs> um, I think some of it is just self-validation. And so in our group, um, I was also commenting on, I really like these, um, these ways of getting together and doing some conversation because I'm kind of like the, the lone crusader. Um, so I really like the validation. It's like, okay, this is what other communities are doing. This is what people are thinking. I'm not off my rocker. I'm, I'm, I'm pursuing this for the best and highest good of people. And uh, so for me, that, that's a huge takeaway is just um, feeling a little more confident in the position and then reinforcing. So some of the comments on different uh, intergenerational programs and things that are going on and people have ideas on it's like, oh yeah, because I've got this whole list of things 
on my bucket list that I want to do. And so other people are doing this where it's things that they're thinking of. So um, I, I just think it's great validation and uh, it's, it's kind of like that virtual support. Thanks, Susan. I think it's pretty neat and inspiring that there's so many of us here that came for this discussion that have very similar or aligned goals and values. And one thing that came up in our group discussion was being intentional with what we're doing. And I think that word intentional stuck with me for today. So that's what I'm taking. Thanks, Natalie. Maybe, maybe I should ask everybody for their word. So think of a word that represents what you're taking away today and put it into chat or shut it out. Okay, and here's a little challenge for you or an assignment, I guess. What is one action that you can do following up on this event today? What's an action or something that you can do today or this week to connect with somebody in your life? Hopefully somebody of a different generation. You may already have a uh, relationship with somebody from another generation. So what are you going to do as a follow-up of this discussion? So I'll let you assign your own action step there. But if you want to share, go ahead, put it in the chat group or just interrupt me. Okay, so our time is almost up. I just, I want to remind you, I think Cindy, have you put the, Cindy's going to put a survey link in the chat box. So please take a minute or two to fill out that survey. We always want feedback because we are looking for ways to improve our events and what, find out what people in our community need. Okay, also Cindy will be sending out an email either today or tomorrow with the recording of today's event and also a link to that survey in case you missed it. Um, I've already talked about joining CORE. Let me tell you about our next event. It's very exciting. It's on March 8th. So um, CORE is hosting a whole series called Frailty. It's a, it's a Frailty series and we are hosting the one, I, I don't know, I think it might be the last one, on March 8th in, from 11 to 12. And the title of ours is More Connection, Better Health, Addressing Emotional Frailty Through Intergenerational Programming. So we're going to have a guest speaker at that one and talking about an intergenerational programming that she does using art. And we're also going to have two seniors that are going to be guests and they're going to talk about what the value is of an intergenerational program for their health, both physical and mental. And so that should be really interesting. So watch for the announcements on that. So if um, I'm just gonna open it up for any last comments before we sign off. Thank you again for coming. And those of you who have not been in our group before, thank you. I hope you'll come back and have a wonderful, hey, it's lunchtime. Have a good lunch. Have a wonderful afternoon and rest of the week. Thanks, Betty.